the train at Silver Dollar City probably lost the greatest robber conductor that it ever had this last week. When I worked at Silver Dollar City, we had one guy on the train that had been there for 30 years. Been at the park for a long time. He'd been an engineer. He'd been a conductor. He'd been a robber. He'd also worked at Fire in the Hole and various other spots in the parks. Rick Horde had pretty much been everywhere. And in many ways, the train was his baby. He was the one that trained pretty much every single robber and conductor that had come through in the last 10, 20 years. We all go back to our roots with Rick because Rick really kind of dated back a long ways on the train, even having worked with the Hershens and coming all the way forward. If there was somebody who knew the train inside and out, knew what it was supposed to be, knew how it was supposed to run, knew what it was supposed to be like, what the workers were like, it was Rick. Rick had a passion for the train. And anytime he thought it was threatened, uh, well, you would see the gruff old bear come out. Rick was probably one of the greatest storytellers of all. And some of the stories he had, I wish I had had a chance to sit down with him and tell him. He would tell stories, for example, at one point in time, they were a lot looser with safety restrictions. And some of the robbers would actually climb up onto what's called Sweet Mary's Tunnel. And they would actually jump onto the top of the train. Now, like I said, much looser safety standards. And as Rick tells the story, he's conducting one day, riding on the back of the train. And as he comes through the train tunnel, one of the guys had decided that he was going to jump on the train and give the passengers a little bit of a scare. And in Rick's words, apparently the dumb Ozark robber forgot how to count. Because as the train comes through, Rick is coming out of the tunnel and all of a sudden he hears this flap. Oh! Well, the robber had jumped off the tunnel onto the car, except he miscounted the car and landed on no car at all and just landed on the tracks. Rick tells stories about uh, one of the Hershen boys had actually been out there robbing trains. And, of course, being son of the owner it creates some interesting dynamics. And they uh, decided that they were going to prank him. And the robbers had actually taken the young man and they had actually tied him to a tree and then left him there. Rick definitely tells it much better than me. Rick tells the time when he was working to help clear land and Mary Hershen was very protective of the trees. The whole reason that the park preserves the trees now is as a legacy to Mary Hershen. Well Mary apparently they were out clearing land and Rick had dug up a tree if I'm getting this right and Mary is starting to come over and it, the people that Rick is working with going, you're in trouble, there's a tree gone, here comes Mary, park a truck over the spot, quick. <laughs> and so they parked a truck over this spot where there had been a tree so Mary Hershen wouldn't see the spot and fire Rick because that's what she did. <laughs> Just a ton of stories that Rick would tell about his time out there. Rick gave the appearance of a crusty, grumpy old man that if you didn't do what he told you to do he was going to yeah that that would totally be rick too i'm gonna kick your rib. rick loved to put on this image of being a stubborn crusty irritable grumpy old man who wasn't gonna take anything and if you didn't do it right he was gonna kick your butt wasn't the word he used but underneath all that Rick was a major softie. Not that he would ever want anybody to know this. He loved on my wife and kids. And you could see when they would come by, he would just light up. I still remember working one Christmas season and him apologizing to me for not buying presents for my wife and kids. Rick, why would you be buying presents for my wife and kids? Just because I like them better than you. Thanks, Rick. He loved to present that gruff exterior. And if you did something like you cried in front of a man, he was going to, how dare you show that? Suck it up. I still remember we had one young guy working out there named Blaze. Blaze had a very hard time because Blaze was raised very soft-spoken, very gentle, very polite, 
everybody was sir, which was really weird because none of us on the train liked being called sir. Blaze just ha was having a hard time. He'd be out there trying to rob and he'd be very quiet and hard to hear and very polite. I'm sorry I gotta rob you today. So Rick finally decided, you know what, I'm gonna take this kid under my wing and I'm gonna take care of him. And Rick Took Blaze on his motorcycle one day. They both had off. Rick loved his motorcycle. Took off for a day trip with Blaze. Took him out riding around and everything. I don't know what he said to Blaze. I don't know what he did, but Blaze came back a changed young man. We were no longer sirs. Now Blaze didn't have any problem getting the voice up a little bit. He was still Blaze, but it was a different Blaze. And turned into a ton of fun. I mean, we liked him to begin with, but now all of a sudden, he was willing to roll with stuff that he couldn't have before. It was just a, a neat transformation that was solely because of Rick. Rick was the one who trained me. It really drilled into me to really do the robbers. You let the script work for yourself. You learn the script, and then you just let it work the way it's written. And you let the robber be part of you, as opposed to trying to act. The people who had the hardest time being robbers were those that were trying to act. They were trying to put on this cartoon personality. It's like, no, it's you. Let it be you. The best robbers were the ones that listened to that advice and listened to Rick coach them through. The thing that Rick really loved, though, was he loved to be able to get you. If Rick was robbing and you were a conductor, anytime you thought that you had the show down and you were comfortable, Rick was going to throw one at you that you'd never seen before. I still remember one time at my first year, towards the end of the year, I mean, I was feeling like I was rolling. I got this down. I've learned some of the extras and options that we do. And I wasn't strutting, but I was confident. Yeah, I can handle it. And I get out there in the middle of the show. We do the regular part of the show and I come back to catch them robbing the train. And we do our little bit. And then all of a sudden, as I'm sitting there going, I'm going to, Rick goes, hold that thought. What? And I'm just standing there while Rick and Josh, who was our lead at the time, step over to the side and they do this whole routine I've never seen before, I've never heard before. And, and the routine basically is, okay, Ralph, we're in trouble. He's going to shoot us. They proceed to come up with this whole little story trying to convince me that Ma is on the train, even though Ma's been dead. And yeah, that train conductor, he's so stupid, he'd believe anything. And I'm standing there on the side, listening and watching this, just like the people on the train going, where is this going? What am I supposed to do? And Josh comes up to us, repeating everything Rick had just said. You can't shoot us. Our Ma's on the train. Yeah, you're so stupid you'd believe anything. And all I could do was just react like I normally would while Rick is sitting there on the side cackling away at my just dumbfounded look of, what do I do? Rick always had a part of the script that we had never heard before. And his ultimate threat was if we got out of hand, he was going to pull out the Wookalar show. The Wookalar Indians. And I never did get to see this. I'm kind of happy I didn't. But apparently it was a whole routine that they did to just really throw off. And that was his threat. You going to go too far? I'm going to do the Wookalar Indians. Okay, Rick. But Rick was so good. He could deliver a line he had delivered thousands of times like it was brand new. And the times I did actually get him stumped once. Totally threw him when I did the pirate show. And that was the one time I saw Rick actually get left speechless. Where they pull up, we stopped your train to warn you. About what? Pirates! And Rick just went, I got Rick. I got him with something he's never seen. That was one of my greatest moments to actually leave Rick stumped. But then he was so good that on my last day, I went ahead and I threw pirates at him again. And I got so tickled at myself and so overjoyed that I actually forgot my line. <laughs> and so I'm standing there as Rick has started to walk away to back the train up and get away from the pirates. And I'm going, eh. Rick's so smooth. He turns around and bails me out and says, you don't want me to leave, do you? Oh, that's right. I need to continue. Rick was amazing that no matter how badly you flopped or failed or foibled something, Rick could pick you up and carry you through and get you going again. He was 
just amazing that way. Rick really was the heart of the train. There was a few years ago that Silver Dollar City came out with this t-shirt. Had a picture of a couple of the guys on it. Uh, said, I survived Alfie and Ralphie Bolin or something like that. And I have to admit, I was a little frustrated over the shirt because it didn't have Rick on it. And in my mind, it shouldn't have had anybody on it but Rick. And Rick alone. Rick was the ultimate guy on the train. He was the ultimate friend. He was an amazing guy. He he really was. So many stories. The guys and I also getting together online and chatting and talking about it. And one of the guys, Huff was one of the most creative guys out there. Huff's an elementary school principal and was for years. And so his sense of timing, he knows ours just innately because he had to for his job. And as conductors, we would wear an outfit that included a uh, pocket watch trying to fill out the theme and because you weren't supposed to wear wristwatches. And so Huff is out there working. He doesn't have a watch at all because he knows the timing. And Rick apparently <laughs> told Huff, you need to get a pocket watch. It's okay, Rick. I've, I've got the timing down. He says, no, you're going to get a pocket watch to fill your outfit or I'm going to kick your... That would be Rick. <laughs> and not mean. He really wasn't mean. Although there were some people who didn't understand that when Rick was being gruff and stubborn, it wasn't because he was mean. It's because it preserved the image of the train. As conductors, we had to have the pocket watch. That's what a conductor carried. It's part of the uniform. And so that was part of carrying that out for him. Goodness, I, I miss Rick. The train since Rick has left has not been the same. He left three years ago or so. Just not the same ever since. I miss him out there. Miss him as a person. The world is a lot better for having Rick. I'm going to miss him. Getting that phone call the other day it was rough. It wasn't even a phone call. It was a message on Facebook. When we first got it, it's like we heard that he passed away a couple days. I was like, what? And so I sent him a text message just in case I hadn't texted him in, in a month or two. And uh, his daughter called me back and I just saw your message and I've got bad news about Rick and my biggest regret is I didn't get over and spend more time with him so wanted to get him telling his stories because he's just the best storyteller funny thing he hated pizza his sense of smell was off so he hated pizza so we always joked about taking him out to pizza because we knew he hated it and then that motorcycle Rick Rick also raced hydrofoil boats at one point. It was actually a championship driver of hydrofoil boats. An amazing career. Had pictures at his home of his racing. And told of a time that he did have a wreck and he flipped a number of times across the water. Rick wasn't afraid to go fast. He didn't like roller coasters though. We did get him on Outlaw Run. And then as we were getting off, Rick was like, Alright, that's the last time I'm ever doing that. Along with a few choice words. <laughs> but he loved his motorcycle. He loved riding. Uh, loved the group of the motorcycle club that he was in. And Rick, you never did give me that motorcycle ride, you promised. Rick Cord was Silver Dollar City. Rick Cord was the Frisco Silver Dollar Line. And if you've been there in the last 30 years, you got to see Rick Cord in action or the people that he trained in action. Rick, we're going to miss you, buddy. But we're going to carry it on for you. If you got a story about Rick on the train, I'd love to hear it. Share it in the comments below, um, and I'll be sharing this video with the family and with the guys. Uh, so we'll all have a part of it. When he did pass, he did not have life insurance. Uh, hadn't gotten it set up yet, so they are in need of, of money to pay for funeral expenses and stuff. I'll provide a link below for the GoFundMe. Um, we'd appreciate your support there. Thanks so much for watching.